Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasser Skill Tone. How are you, my dear learners? In this video, we are going to talk about how to write a meta analysis paper with an example for your Scopus or Web of Science publication. I know many of my learners and my viewers are facing problem to write a meta analysis paper properly. In this video, we are going to talk about with an example about the data collection process, methodological flow and all those other issues that you should consider for writing a research paper related meta analysis. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first thing you need to remember that we have to select a title. In this case, for example, we are talking about financial development and economic growth and meta-analysis. This title is an example, but the method that I'm talking about, you can apply in different type of research domains or your subjects. It may be business management or economics, as well as the engineering life science. There are several other videos I'm going to talk about in future regarding medical related data and medical related meta analysis. But for this case, for the simplicity, we're taking this as an example. After selecting the title, the first step in meta analysis to start with a nice paragraph to hook the readers and the editor. It's very important or a conventional practice that you start with an argument. A start with an argument opposite and posit positive response can make an reader or editors to understand yes there is a value inside the paper so always start with an argument in your first paragraph the paragraph that i'm talking about you can see in my video that the paragraph is going to start with a question and then showing some example with literature review whether there is a positive for the motion or against the motion argument and that will be your first paragraph the next paragraph you will talk about how you are going to address these research problems that is exist in the literature. For example, you can say that we are going to quantify this issue using meta analysis and what are my research problem or research question you need to start in this particular paragraph. So after the first paragraph, the second paragraph, you start with a research question, research problem that you are going to address in your research paper, just like the one that I'm sharing here. The next step is to find out a methodology where you are going to apply to address the research problem that you have talked about. And that methodology has to be within the framework of meta-analysis, direction and guideline. There are some guidelines available for economics research and the medicine research. Normally in meta-analysis, we quite often see in the medical science, there are a lot of meta-analysis going on, like one group and two group intervention, those are the things. But generally speaking, in this example, you will find that there are many ways you can use this methodology in different other subjects. And the third paragraph, you're talking about what value you are giving to this paper, like using the methodology, what results you are expecting, how you are going to address this result and how, what is your approach to find out your research problem in the, in the end of this research publication. And the final paragraph, you will talk about the structure of the paper as well as what you what would be your expected outcome from this study so this is your introduction part for any meta analysis paper you can start with the next one is to start with the defining the measurement and the most important thing before defining the measurement is to the methodology that you are collecting the research paper as you know that meta, meta analysis is a part of a systematic review so there should be a criteria to collect your information. And in my opinion, the best way you can do that is called the Prisma flowchart. As you can see here that the Prisma flowchart explaining your inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. You always follow this Prisma criteria or Prisma flowchart in order to select your methodological problem in the research domain. For instance, if you are selecting from different sources like Scopus, Web of Science, Gesture, how you are going to do that, what are the criteria, inclusion, exclusion, that are very clearly mentioned this in the Prisma flowchart. So use the Prisma flowchart. The next one you are going to talk about defining the model. For instance, you are going to talk about the financial development and economic growth. This is a common model and this kind of a linear model. As you can see in my video description that the linear model shows like this. So 
there are some papers which who apply this type of linear model you are going to collect those paper who actually align with your model basically you are estimating the linear relationship between economic develop economic growth and financial development so that would be your common or generic model for this study and you are going to collect the paper based on this model the next one you are going to talk about how you are going to apply the model into analysis so the most important thing here is to effect size there are many effect size for example mean standard error standard deviation there are so many other effect sizes but in this paper we are going to talk about the partial correlation coefficient this is one of the important criteria as an effect size for this type of research you can always apply into different other type of research in order to calculate the partial correlation coefficient there are a bunch of steps that i am going to share in my video description box you will get it very easily so this is my effect size so what i am going to do i will show you in the excel sheet that in order to calculate the uh, partial correlation coefficient as the effect size what data i need from my collecting research paper so all the research papers that i have collected you have to mention how many papers that you have collected and that is going to be your population and among the population you are going to collect the sample that how many papers fulfill your criteria according to the prisma flow chart after that you select the effect size in this case i am selecting the partial correlation coefficient now there are many way you can do that the only problem is different research paper has a different sample right and in different samples there are many type of biasness can occur when you collect the partial or when you calculate the partial correlation coefficient based on the t statistics and sample size right so we need to standardize that and to do that we are using the fisher standardized z score method that will help you to find out a common standardized effect size for each of these paper don't worry i am going to share it using my excel document you will find it clearly what i am talking about my dear learners in the data analysis we have to first see what are the data that we require for instance you can see here that data set for the paper financial development and economic growth a meta analysis the file contains studies excluded studies variable stata or r programming whatever you do or open source any meta analysis i'll discuss that in detail in the next video data and list of economies and countries these are your information that is required for your collection from different sources of your research paper then the next one you can see the list of the studies what you have to do you just follow the step that i'm sharing over here for any meta analysis paper the studies are listed over here and then you can see the type and authors then the article types are given whether it is an article book chapter or newspaper whatever you are collecting as an exclusion or inclusion criteria then talk then write down the title of the research paper related to that paper the author's name and everything that will help you to summarize everything in one single excel sheet the next one is the excluded studies there are many studies in this research almost more than 1000 studies we have collected but in this paper you can see that all these research articles or studies are included not included so there are some excluded studies which also you can refer to then comes the variable very important whether you are going to study using partial coefficient co uh, coefficient analysis or uh, you can use the meta analysis for z score mean difference or standard deviation standard error or maybe you can talk about other different type of uh, meta analysis multivariate regression meta regression analysis whatever you do you need variables that you are going to collect right so the variables list are also given here for example id study study level of the study this is called the coded variables and then coefficient uh, standard error t p value and t all this information are listed in this particular case uh, sheet you can see all these sheets are given over here all the related estimations whatever i am selecting from my econometric tools and technique which is mentioned in other papers i already listed here and it is very important that you listed all these variables that you are going to analyze in this paper the next one is your stata file or your eviews file or your r programming file 
comprehensive meta analysis file or any type of software you are talking about in the next video i'm going to talk about a free software and i already talked about the jap software so any type of software that you are going to apply this data for analysis you need to design that data accordingly for this case the standard data set looks like this this is db dependent variable real gdp per capita gdp then you have many other variables like for instance the sample size of n t is the time period then summary of the sample size then uh, partial correlation coefficient all these things are given here this is a complete picture of each and every study data interestingly you will see that in this particular case that one study for instance the study we are talking about al malkawi and abdullah has one two three four five six these what are these these are the variables that we are talking about these are the variables related to your financial development remember i talked about a model which is linked a linear relationship between financial development and economic growth now economic growth is a dependent variable and we consider this model to collect our data and most of the data set or most of the paper does have the dependent variable economic growth but for financial development there are other variables for example money broad money or you can say the stock market banks all those things are uh, different uh, research articles mentioned differently so we are collecting all the estimation variables that they use in the linear model and that's why for the first paper we have six variables in the next one we have 11 variables we are collecting all the relevant variables under the domain of financial development this is a broad variable name under this we can add many of the variables which we require for our analysis this is very important now once you design this whole thing i mean according to the variable you design the name of the study and then you can code it the variable uh, the study code 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 and then all the data that is required for analysis are given here like for example pcc partial correlation coefficient how you ca calculate this is very important and also uh, there are the in order to calculate it you need t statistics you need n you need some of the size or sample size all these things you need and you collect this information from respective article i'm going to share how we are going to do that okay now the next one is very important is each and every study in this particular analysis we have separately identify or distributed our analysis information for example this is the overall information but this information in the tab you can see each and every paper separately what are the information given here when you are uploading your manuscript different journals they ask you the metadata and you can use this metadata for supplementary file and the reviewers and the editor will be very happy that the comprehensive way you can design your data it is very very important for a publication in a scopus or a high impact factor journal from the meta analysis perspective now you can see here that anderson case there are seven eleven variables and the dependent variable is common dependent variable is economic growth and also i told you there is a standardized z score that we have calculated using feature transformation then standard error partial correlation uh, we need the standard error of the partial correlation coefficient value and then t value p value and the number of observation t is the number of time period and sample total sample size so these are the information separately we use in a different tabs for each of the study now regarding in this case you can see that the analysis of our paper that we're talking about that here the number t value 2.97 where did we collect this information so let us see the same paper we're talking about the anderson and trap right so if you go to the anderson and trap this is the paper we're talking about anderson and trap and if you go to the table 6.1 average financial development and simultaneous per capita gdp growth you see here that 2.97 is the t values in brackets 2.97 3.48 2.61 is the t value you can see here that 2.97 3.48 2.61 are the t values all these bracket t values are associated with the number of variables that they are using in this particular paper so you have to collect and design and list it down under the t value list why we are using t because in order to calculate the partial correlation coefficient it is very important we need t value 
n and t and the number of observations or sample size and we have to design it and you don't need many softwares to calculate excel is sufficient okay so this is the one that this is how you can collect the t value and then the corresponding observation n observation if you go to the corresponding observation the n observation you can find it in the description or the descriptive statistics if i go a little bit up of this paper you will see all these descriptive statistics are given in each of these paper from there you can easily collect the number of observation for example minimum 25 percent quantile mean 75 percent quantile and number of total observations 60 60 60 so the observations are also collected here 60 60 60 60 so you need to mention each of the variable you calculate the pcc each of the variable you calculate the pcc and you need let's say 11 variables each variable need the t value p value number of observation calculate the partial correlation coefficient calculate the standardized fisher transformation of the z score for each of these criteria the next step is to talk about the results and then you are going to talk about how these results are connecting with your research question once you find that finally you go write down your discussion part in the discussion part you may talk about the results like average z score forest plot z score funnel plot for publication bias scores or any other type of research analysis that you have done you need to discuss those things and in the conclusion you would summarize your topic using the research question that you have started and then finally you write down your research outcome in the conclusion and that is how you can design your research paper based on a meta analysis concept learners i think you understand how to use the data for meta analysis how to calculate it and what are the issues that you need to face in writing the research paper so if you follow my steps properly with the excel demonstration that i have shared with you i am pretty sure you can write your next scopus meta analysis paper very quickly but if you need my help or support you can always email me you can always send me in the video description and common uh, comment box that you what help you require i will of course get back to you so i hope this video is useful for you in the next tutorial i'm going to talk about few other free open source softwares and its tutorial to use the meta analysis in those softwares and it will be a very easy one so in couple of other videos in the future you will see meta analysis systematic review and data analysis part in this video tutorial channel so i hope this is useful for you if you like my video you can share it comment it and subscribe it and of course i will see you in the next tutorial bye bye my dear learner thank you